Hello, my name is April Ramey, um, owner of Antler Alchemy, and I am here today for another psychedelic tea chat where we talk about all things psychedelic, herbal, and discuss kind of what's been coming through and information that the plants have been sharing with me and questions that people have asked me that tend towards um, understanding the psychedelic herbalist nature. And yeah, so let's get into it today. Today in my cup, this is part of it, the psychedelic tea chat is I share with what I'm drinking. And today I am drinking the beloved cacao. And in my cacao today, I'm drinking one from Colombia. Uh, it's the Origins Cacao. And uh, it has, um, it's one of my favorites. And it's from the Colombia region in the Sierra Nevadas in the mountains with a tribe called the Arawaku. And the Arawaku are in um, relationship with a similar tribe called the Kogis. And so there's a lot of pagamentos, which is paying for the earth. And I had the honor in November to revisit Colombia, revisit the Arawaku tribe, drink cacao with them. And yeah, so today I'm drinking cacao and um, I've got a lot to talk about. And I'm not going to talk a long time because I try to keep these short because I could go on for probably two hours. And uh, the great thing about this cacao is that I have added a special herbal blend that I like to use every day. And in it is maca powder, cinnamon, lion's mane, reishi mushroom, reishi mushroom, rose powder, licorice root, and cardamom. And this is my preferred uh, powder formula that I love to offer in here. And I'll have that available on my website soon. I'm in the process of making a label because I've had so many people ask me, what do I add into my cacao? And that's what I add. And then I also do uh, raw coconut butter. And you can stop there if you want it to be vegan, which I do a lot of the times because the raw coconut butter allows a lot of the creaminess. And then I also lately have been adding whipped honey, like a local whipped honey to where I live. And there's something about whipped honey that has a different flavor for me than uh, a liquid honey. And so, and I don't add much, just a little bit to sweeten it. And um, yeah, so excited to to see you all. And yes, Lee, I will be leading a retreat in Guatemala uh, at the end of the year where we will be working with cacao farmers that are there in Guatemala as well and offering a lot of other cool stuff too. Uh, but what I wanna talk about today stems from that retreat and stems from a lot of the things that I'm seeing in the psychedelic space, uh, ceremonial space as well. And the main thing that I wanted to talk about today was this idea of feeling as if, um, oh, someone wanted me to repeat what's in my cacao. So I have cacao in here from the Arawakus, which I sell on my lifecollective.love website. And I'll link that below when I put this up. And then also it's the cacao powder that I have been making. And that is maca, cinnamon powder, lion's mane, reishi, rose, licorice root, and cardamom. And you can use that as a base and then add some other powders, like if you like cayenne or a little bit of salt or whatever you want. And then I put raw coconut butter and a little bit of whipped honey in here as well. And something that uh, came up when I was thinking about cacao and you know Valentine's Day and love for ourselves and all these things. And I was thinking about the power of cacao and the upswing of cacao ceremonies and ceremonies in general. And it made me want to think about like, okay, so cacao, right, is high in theobromine, which is kind of similar to caffeine, but has a lower percentage of, of uh, stimulation. But what it does is that it smooths out the muscle layers and opens up the chest and creates circulation, which then in turn opens up the heart more because there's more circulation, right? And so there's this love that's like 
opening and spreading. And something that I've been noticing in the ceremonial world, and especially when it comes to cacao, and just in general, is this idea, this couple of ideas about integrity, about the word ceremony, about sticking to the culture that you are utilizing a ceremony from, and then just navigating the history of cacao. And, and where it all kind of comes in. So one thing that you'll learn about me is that I really believe in the idea that plants have consciousness. So plants have this ability of being able to speak to us as human beings and animals, and they're moving, right? They create their, uh, their migration through desire, through us like loving them or loving what they offer, their flowers, their beauty, their taste, and what they, just, they provide. And so in the ceremonial world, especially around plants and medicine, there is a lot about um, doing it as a ceremony. And something that I've been thinking about is in cacao, right? The history of it is that pre-Mesoamerican times, they were, it was native to around the equator area and that the pods were used as currency, that the chocolate drink was mainly for the royals. And that then at some point, uh, it became so popular, right, post in the early 1500s, post-colonialism, when Spain came to conquer and they started to feel, they started to hear about chocolate and started to exporting it to Europe. So then it became this like drink that everyone has or wants. And that was definitely something in Europe that only the elite could have at a certain point. And I was in class with one of my uh, favorite herbalists, Mimi Hernandez, and she has a book in, that she wrote. And I was in her class uh, at the American Herbalist Guild Symposium, and she was speaking about cacao. And what I loved that she brought up was that cacao now, more than not, is a beverage that's enjoyed with the family. It's enjoyed in communal space. It's enjoyed with community and fun. And I really wanted to bring cacao to the stage because it is a heart opener. It creates that love and appreciation for all of you, for humanity, for our friends and community. And one of the things that I tend to see that kind of hurts my heart a little bit is a couple of things is that ceremonies come around and then people think that that ceremony is the only way you can imbibe in a particular plant especially cacao. And I really just don't think that's true. And then it creates a lot of division. And then also there's this idea of the word ceremony being used when um, ceremony can mean so many different things to so many different people, right? Like ceremony can be like, all right, we have played music and there's this ritual. And so I really believe that there's a importance these in this time and age and being able to really discern what the word means and words are important. And so for me, there's this quote that says, life is a ceremony and how you live it is a ritual. And I'm not sure if you feel that same way, but if you do, so life is the ceremony, right? And how you live it is the ritual, which means that we are ritualistic human beings. We are focused on doing things in a way almost similar each day and we call it routine but there's a reason why i have a course called ritual as routine because when you steep in yourselves into ritual then it takes away this need for ceremony to look a specific way for ceremony to somehow be unattainable for the commonplace person or ceremony is not acceptable if you don't have a certain amount of crystals or crystal bowls or a person who's leading the ceremony who has is like way more knowledgeable than you are and what i really believe is that the word ceremony is being overused and there's so many other different words that we can use because again, life is a ceremony. How we live it is a ritual. So you can be a ceremonial practitioner and not have a view or look like you are. What do I mean by that? 
there's so many times that I might be deep in a ritual or in a ceremony and someone might not even know because it just looks like I'm doing my ritual, my regular thing in the day. I could be driving my car and bringing a ritualistic aspect to it and creating this thought in my mind that creates a ceremony. Am I going to go out and be like, hey, who wants to join my car ceremony with me? Probably not. Right. But at the same time, it's like when I choose to do a cacao offering, I call it a cacao offering. Like I'm here as the guide in this moment who has the cacao and I'm offering this to my community, to the public. And I want to hold you in a space. Right. And so that's where the word ceremony comes in, where the division comes in, which I think needs to be monitored, released, and let go because separatism and division is part of the colonial mindset, is part of the way of uh, creating colonization, is by separating us from nature, from each other, creating and demonizing and creating people into others. So where that word can come into um, some kind of like division is when people think that somehow Oh, I, I hope I'm still here. Am I still here? Because my manifestation alarm just went off and I forgot and didn't realize that that was going to happen. Uh, so manifestation alarm just went off to remind me uh, again. And then that's kind of like a great example right here now is that that alarm is something for me that lets me know at this time to take a moment, take a breath and honor where I've been what I've, where I'm going and what is possible. And it connects me. And that to me is a ritualistic thing that I do every day. It's a moment of prayer. So if you want to just take a moment and honor that within yourself, feel free. The division that I notice that happens when the word ceremony is used is this idea of somehow there there could be, how do I describe this? I've seen people get really upset if someone calls something a ceremony and they're not from the indigenous culture that it's from, or they're not uh, a person who looks like you would expect someone to look like leading that ceremony. And that becomes an othering because a lot of the times we don't know someone's path to where they got to being in a place, to be able to present themselves in a manner. This is one of the reasons why I think it's important to you make sure we're using our words correctly. There's a lot of times I create offerings for plants that I'm like, hmm, hey, Shaw, you're here. We're talking about cacao. Um, there's a lot of times where I do offerings that are beautiful and amazing and I don't call them a ceremony because I don't want anyone to think that I'm some kind of like master or ceremonial leader for the masses or to represent this particular plant, um, herb or medicine. And the thing is, is it's like, I have a deep practice and maybe I have some training and most of the time I've probably traveled somewhere to learn from someone and went like I did for this origin cacao that's in Colombia. I went to Colombia, spent money, spent time, spent energy being with the tribes, fostering a connection to be able to bring this back to talk to you all about it. That is what I call integrity. And so what's really important is when people are living in integrity of their lives and their offerings, what happens is when we don't know someone's past or history and we're throwing shade on them because they're doing something that looks like they shouldn't be doing or they're calling something a ceremony and they don't look like they have the heritage or the information or the knowledge then it becomes where our spiritual community is now othering others within it. When in reality, what really needs to be paid attention to is to someone's integrity. You're not going to learn that from an Instagram post. You're not going to learn that from a reel or a picture. You're only going to learn that from reading someone's bio. If they feel like even telling you about their lives in the first place, you're not going to learn that by one moment of interaction with someone. What really happens is you're going to have to pay attention to the way people live. Are they in integrity? Are they doing what's necessary? Are they 
they opening their heart? Is this a deep practice of theirs? Are they sharing that it's a deep practice of theirs? So a lot of the times this word ceremony, I think is getting overused because it doesn't allow people the opportunity to come to who and what you are and just show up and be present to learn and to understand what's what's going on, right? And so I'm just putting this out there that if you find yourself feeling like, I don't know if I have the right to be able to offer this or to do something, like it's really good that you're questioning that, that you're thinking about your integrity, thinking about what information and knowledge you have. And you could always change the wording. So you're not promising that you are offering something in a manner that is uh, indigenous to a tribe or uh, a certain a group of people have been known for doing. You can call it an offering. You can call it an exploration. You can call it a guiding of sorts. And let's let go of this word that just means ceremony. What the word is, is about holding a space for people to show up in the full selves that they are. And so I really invite all of you all in your own life, no matter what you identify as, is to look at the words that you're using. And, and notice if that word really fits or if you're just trying to use it as a fad. So for example, psychedelic tea chat, right? Like a psychedelic herbalist, I say this because I know that that's a way to get myself in front of people. What I'm really teaching on a deeper level is herbalism, subtleties, getting in tune with nature, understanding that life is psychedelic and that this word is what I just explained in my psychedelic herbalist pose is that psyche is a way of reanimating our soul. And so when we look at that word, when I looked at the etymology of the word, that's when I felt comfortable actually using it because I was like, oh, that's what I'm doing. My goal here is to reanimate people's souls and purpose to what they're meant to do when they're here. And that goes beyond like what plant medicines you're using, what ceremony you've been in, what supposedly thing you know or don't know has everything to do with your devotion, your ritual, your intention, your integrity. And so that's really what I wanted to talk about today because cacao has been a morning practice of mine well long before <laughs> cacao ceremonies became a thing. And we were talking about how like, if you go to some of these cultures where the cacao is grown, there's no ceremony. Like when I was hanging out with the Atawaku, it was just the women roasting the beans over the fire, pulling them off with me. Obviously I'm supporting and helping and they're praying and they're, they're focused, but their kids are running around. Their life is happening. There's the, everything is going on all at the same time. And so it's beautiful. And I love, don't get me wrong. I love a good like moment where we're all sitting together in a circle and there's music and I'm being taken on a journey and it is very ceremonial and ritualistic. I think it's so beautiful and I just live for that as well. And I've been having a morning ritual with cacao, a morning practice, almost a daily practice for well over like 10 years. And so when I'm ready to offer someone cacao and hold space and be in it, I'm not like, I've been here doing this for 10 years and this and this and this and that. I just call it an offering and I humble myself because what really is happening I'm not there. I'm not present. What I want to amplify as a psychedelic practitioner, as a psychedelic herbalist, what I'm amplifying is the plant. What I'm saying to the people is this plant has the information and the knowledge. It has the consciousness. It's here and it's ready to work within your own body, your own system and everything and open you up and be your teacher I'm here as a guide, as like a humble human being that has been inspired and altered by this plant time and time and time and time again to the point where I'm like, I have to share, I have to share, right? And so it's more of, this is me, this is how I know, this is what I enjoy, this is what I think you'll enjoy. Why don't you join me? Come join me in this process. Come join me in a daily ritual. Come drink this beautiful cacao. Come add it, add this powder. I only share this stuff because it's inspired me. And it's not because I know anything. It's because I know you 
know everything. You know everything about yourself and imagine what happens if you get inspired with the plants that want to give you some of their information and knowledge. Just like I'm here sitting here talking about my thoughts and ideas on the word ceremony. Does it really matter? Probably not. But I'm here being inspired by Cacao to share this because I want to remind you all that Life is the ceremony. How you live it is the ritual. So every day, every moment of your life is a ceremony. You don't need to go to ceremony. You don't need a word ceremony to remind you to take moments, to have rituals, to take care of yourself. We all have daily rituals. We all have our way of being. And I just want to, I want to open up the concept and idea of being able to add plants into that ritual, that ceremony every single day so that you can live a life inspired by them. And then you can be healed and you can be fully present to who you are. So that was my psychedelic tea chant rant today. I'm really grateful for everyone that's been tuning in, who's been giving feedback. If you ever have any questions, you want to talk to me or you want me to talk about something or you have a question about psychedelics or you have a question about plant medicine or herbs in general, I'm really here for you in doing this. This is a labor of love. This is something that's been inspired by the plants. They asked me to do this. And so I'm showing up. Uh, we every week or every other week, it turns like, seems like it's going to be Thursdays of the day. And I'm showing up in my best to offer some sort of knowledge and information that the earth's been sharing with me, that the plants are sharing with me and what I've been noticing in the psychedelic space. And I want to expand the psychedelic space from just the heavy hitters to understanding that all plants are part of the psychedelic movement, the idea of us awakening and animating our soul in psyche. So I'm here for that. And I'm sending all my love and I hope to talk to you all soon.